ABGs can be difficult to grasp. However, they provide a near immediate reflection of the physiology of the patient, and they allow you to recognize and treat pathology more rapidly. Before getting stuck into the details of the analysis, it's important to look at the patient's current clinical status, as this provides essential context to the ABG result. Here are a few examples to demonstrate how important context is when interpreting an ABG. A normal PaO2 in a patient on high flow oxygen. This is abnormal, as you would expect the patient to have a PaO2 well above the normal range with this level of oxygen therapy. A normal PaCO2 in a hypoxic asthmatic patient. This is a sign that they are tiring and need ITU intervention. A very low PaO2 in a patient who looks completely well, is not short of breath, and has a normal O2 saturation. This is likely a venous sample. Your first question when looking at the ABG should be, is this patient hypoxic? As hypoxia is the most immediate threat to life. PaO2 should be over 10 kilopascals when oxygenating on room air in a healthy patient. If the patient is receiving oxygen therapy, their PaO2 should be approximately 10 kilopascals less than the percent inspired concentration FiO2, or fraction of inspired oxygen. So a patient on 40% oxygen would be expected to have a PaO2 of approximately 30 kilopascals. Hypoxemia is a below normal level of oxygen if the PaO2 is less than 10 kilopascals on air, a patient is considered hypoxemic. If the PaO2 is less than 8 kilopascals on air, a patient is considered severely hypoxemic and in respiratory failure. Seemingly small abnormalities in pH have very significant and wide-ranging effects on the physiology of the human body. Therefore, paying close attention to pH abnormalities is essential. So we need to ask ourselves, is the pH normal, acidotic, or alkalotic? Acidotic is a pH less than 7.35. Normal is a pH between 7.35 and 7.45. And alkalotic is a pH greater than 7.45 we need to consider the driving force behind the change in pH. Broadly speaking, the causes can be either metabolic or respiratory. The changes in pH are caused by an imbalance in the CO2, respiratory, or HCO3, metabolic. These work as buffers to keep the pH within a set range, and when there is an abnormality of either of these, the pH will be outside of the normal range. As a result, when an ABG demonstrates alkalosis or acidosis, you need to then begin considering what is driving this abnormality by moving through the next few steps of this guide. At this point, prior to assessing the CO2, you already know the pH and the PaO2. So, for example, you may know your patient's pH is abnormal, but you don't yet know the underlying cause. It could be caused by the respiratory system with an abnormal level of CO2, or it could be metabolically driven with an abnormal level of HCO3. Looking at the level of CO2 quickly helps rule in or out the respiratory system as the cause for the derangement in pH. CO2 binds with H2O and forms carbonic acid, H2CO3, which can then rapidly dissociate into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. When a patient is retaining CO2, the blood will become more acidotic, as the equation has been driven to the right, releasing hydrogen ions, thus lowering the pH. When a patient is blowing off CO2, the equation is driven to the left, reversing the process, and the patient's blood will become less acidotic and more alkalotic. The idea of compensation is that the body can try and adjust other buffers to keep the pH within the normal range. If the cause of the pH imbalance is from the respiratory system, 
the body can adjust the HCO3 to counterbalance the pH abnormality, bringing it closer to the normal range. This works the other way around as well. If the cause of the pH imbalance is metabolic, the respiratory system can try and compensate by either retaining or blowing off CO2 to counterbalance the metabolic problem via increasing or decreasing alveolar ventilation. So we need to ask ourselves, is the CO2 normal or abnormal? If it's abnormal, does this abnormality fit with the current pH? For example, if the CO2 is high, it would make sense that the pH was low, suggesting this was more likely a respiratory acidosis. If the abnormality in CO2 doesn't make sense as the cause of the pH abnormality, for example, normal or low CO2 and a low pH, it would suggest that the underlying cause for the pH abnormality is metabolic. We now know the pH and whether the underlying problem is metabolic or respiratory in nature from the CO2 level. Piecing this information together with the HCO3, we can complete the picture. HCO3 is a base, which helps mop up acids or hydrogen ions. So when the HCO3 is raised, the pH is increased as there are fewer free hydrogen ions, alkalosis. When HCO3 is low, the pH is decreased as there are more free hydrogen ions, acidosis. Again, we can see this demonstrated in the carbonic acid equation. So we need to ask ourselves, is the HCO3 normal or abnormal? If it's abnormal, does this abnormality fit with the current pH? For example, a low HCO3 and acidosis? If the abnormality doesn't make sense as the cause for the deranged pH, it suggests the cause is more likely respiratory, which you should have already known from your assessment of CO2. You may note that in these tables, HCO3 and CO2 are both included, as it is important to look at each in the context of the other. The base excess is another surrogate marker of metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. A high base excess of greater than 2 millimoles per liter indicates that there is a higher than normal amount of HCO3 in the blood, which may be due to a primary metabolic alkalosis or a compensated respiratory acidosis. A low base excess of less than negative 2 millimoles per liter indicates that there is a lower than normal amount of HCO3 in the blood, suggesting either a primary metabolic acidosis or a compensated respiratory alkalosis. Compensation has been touched on already in the earlier sections. Respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, that is, changes in the CO2, can be metabolically compensated by increasing or decreasing the levels of HCO3 in an attempt to move the pH closer to the normal range. Metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, that is, changes in the HCO3, can be compensated by the respiratory system retaining or blowing off CO2 in an attempt to move the pH closer to the normal range. Respiratory compensation for a metabolic disorder can occur quickly by either increasing or decreasing alveolar ventilation to blow off more CO2 in order to raise the pH or retain more CO2 in order to lower the pH. Metabolic compensation for a respiratory disorder, however, takes at least a few days to occur as it requires the kidneys to either reduce HCO3 production to decrease pH or increase HCO3 production to increase pH. As a result, if you see evidence of metabolic compensation for a respiratory disorder, for example, increased HCO3 slash base excess in a patient with COPD and CO2 retention, you can assume that the respiratory derangement has been ongoing for at least a few days, if not more. Congratulations on completing our tutorial! Now, head over to our Geeky Medics website and work through some examples to grow your confidence.